Okay, everybody, good morning um, or afternoon or early evening or late evening or very early morning. Um, so today we're going to talk about some kinematic formulae. So there's three of them that we're going to be using. The first one is V equals V sub naught plus A T. Now your book or many high school books show this as VF for final equals VI for initial plus AT. But this is um, a more common way to see it in college. And I know you're all taking this class for some college experience. But the V subscript not means that um, it's at nada or zero time and then this is the v that occurs if there's acceleration for a time okay so if you read this like a sentence your velocity here your final velocity is a combination of your initial velocity plus uh, another velocity, and you know, I'm saying this is a velocity because if V equals V sub naught, and it also has to equal AT because you see that this is just a plus. So it means these two things are both V. Um, so this acceleration times time is an addition. Um, which could mathematically be subtraction too. You know, if the acceleration here is in the opposite direction of the initial velocity. So that's the formula. That's one of the formulas. There's a lot more to how that worked out, but we'll save that for another time. And then your second kinematic formula is x is equal to v sub naught t plus one half at squared and this will look very um close to what you have in your book the only difference would be this v sub naught here would be vi so thinking about our math relationships there's a plus here which means this and this you know since this is an equation that is given to us we can assume that this v sub naught times t is going to be x, okay? And this 1 half at squared is also going to be x. And there's a long lengthy discussion I can have about, you know, how these come together and make sense. But for this uh, ABC day, I'm going to kind of hold off on that. So x then is displacement. Um, and then you know velocity and time, and this is acceleration. So that's your second kinematic equation. And then the third one we're going to talk about today is v squared. It's equal to v sub naught squared plus 2ax. Okay, so x is pretty common for displacement or distance. Um, then we have our acceleration and our two initial and final velocities. Now, all of these are assuming that acceleration is a constant. So, if we have a change in acceleration, that's called jerk. That's the physics term for a change in acceleration is jerk. And then, it's harder to find, but I believe the change in jerk is called snap. Okay, so here's that quick um, video on, you know, the explanation of the kinet kinematic formulae. Real simple. So I started the, so the kinematic formulas out, um, which are actually built from a couple other things. I'll tell you what that is now. So if we have an average velocity, oops. then we can define that a couple different ways. We can say that is final V 
plus initial V divided by 2, assuming that acceleration is constant. Okay, um, one thing I like about this is it's just exactly the way it, you would think it is in math. You have two numbers and you find the average, and because the acceleration is constant here, we know that this formula works. So it's just like it is a math. Now there's another way to have an average V, and that's just the total distance traveled divided by the time that it takes it to travel. So it's like if you're going to, you know, Fargo, you're starting out, you're starting out at your house, and then you go on the highway and you're going faster, and then you slow down, and then you go faster, and then you slow down. So that there's many different V's. So there's a smaller V in the beginning, a large V for a while, and you slow down, and another large V. So all these V's can't really be averaged unless you were, you know, to do some calculus um, for, you know, the simple instantaneous occurrence of these. So what we do then, and it makes sense, is we just take our total distance divided by our total time. And then we get our average V. Now this is going to include stops and all that other stuff. So it's not super descriptive, but it's a great easy way to figure out your average velocity. Just to refresh your memory, yesterday's video, we had um, a distance time graph It'd be really easy to figure out our velocity if we had that perfect slope because slope is the rise over the run. And if you look at this, x is actually meters. So that's a little bit weird because, you know, you see x in the bottom because your x-axis is there, but you get used to it. Um, so your rise is meters, your run is seconds. And you should be able to recognize that label as velocity. Could be speed also in this case. So I'm a little bit more concerned about, you know, a graph that looks a little bit like this. You know, how do you get an average velocity here? So this is your distance or your displacement time graph for talking velocity. And you can see there's a, a whole stopping period there because there's zero slope. But you take your final position minus your initial position, which ends up just being that number, over the time it took to be there, your average velocity then is, is uh, your x minus x of naught, which just means, you know, where you're stuck stopping minus where you're starting divided by the time that it would take you to get there so hopefully this clears up some questions for you um, I'll do just a couple problems here for you so you know a question that you might come in contact with would be you know let's say you have a cheetah and the cheetah is pretty fast right so you can see it's really running fast here because of how the look on his face. So let's just say that the cheetah is running 100 meters. And it takes the cheetah five seconds to run that 100 meters. So the question may be, what's your average velocity? Which is distance over time. Your average velocity is 100 over 5. Your average velocity is 20 meters per second. Now, one thing I want you to notice here is the way that I'm lining up my equal signs. And I know it's going to be a pain for you guys to do that if you're not already doing it, but it's an absolute for me. So you got to line up those equal signs. you got to do it right away, get in the habit, because once we get further into this, the problems will be a lot more complex. 
But then let's just say we have another problem. So we got a big wheel, small wheel. And I'm not exactly sure how this looks. Most of my um, art is like really, like everybody agrees it's typically the way it really is. Um, you know, and I don't know where the chain is on this, but it's probably right there. So there's a happy guy riding his bike with a smiley face. Um, so let's just say that this biker is going, you know, a total like, you know, 15 kilometers. And it takes them, you know, like half an hour. So if I'm trying to go for the average velocity in this situation, I'm going to tell you right now, pretty much most of my stuff is going to be meters for distance, seconds for time. So we're going to have to switch this one over. So the average velocity here then is going to be 15,000 meters, right, because kilos, thousand, divided by, what's a half hour? I'd say it's 1,800 seconds. Check my math on that. Oh, I made a mistake here. I have got to, in order to get credit from my teacher, got to write my formula first in variable form, then fill in the variables or the knowns and then finally come up with an answer so my answer for this is 8.33 meters per second okay and then I'm just going to show you a couple more examples and we're done okay so let's just say that we have that um, rider A rider B here on this graph and you know, the question would be, what is the velocity for rider A? Okay, so the velocity in this case is distance over time or displacement over time. And so this is a constant slope here. So I'll just take these two um, points. Um, and this is meters. I don't know I had a second there, but that's meters. Um, so the slope of this graph then is meters per second. So in this case is 10 meters in 10 seconds. So the average velocity, which is, you know, would be the instantaneous velocity at any time also, since it's a constant slope, the one meter per second. Okay. And then um, the velocity for B would be starting with the same formula. In this case, you can see that it's going half the distance in the same amount of time. So hopefully it makes sense that it's half the velocity. Okay, and then the last question that might be asked of you would be, to figure out the average velocity for a graph that looks like this. And then you'd have to just take your final minus initial, and that would give you over your time that took to do that. And that'll give you your total average velocity. So we'll just put some numbers in here. Say 20 meters, it took five seconds. So your average velocity here is four meters per second. Now we talked about velocity have a direction. All of these velocities are in the positive direction. That's assumed if there's no sign. Okay, hopefully that helps. Have a great day.